Section 6.3 is all about tests for parallelograms, and we'll combine that a little bit with 6.7, which is all about coordinate proof. So first, prepare your notes. Uh, for your table of contents, we have kind of like two sections here, 6.3 and 6.7. So, uh, if you remember back to section 6.2, we had a bunch of if-then statements. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then we knew that both pairs of opposite sides were congruent. Both pairs of opposite angles were congruent. Consecutive interior angles, supplementary. And the diagonals bisect each other. And we also had that if we had one right angle, then it had four right angles. So section 6.3 is all about whether the converse of these statements is true. So the converse, if you recall, the converse it switches the hypothesis and conclusion of an if-then statement. So for example, if we say, if today is Wednesday, then I'm at school, the converse of that statement would be, if I'm at school, then today is Wednesday. So this example shows that it's not always true that the converse will be uh, will have the same logical value as the original statement. Sometimes it is true though. So let's examine. So section 6.3 is all about these tests for parallelograms. So the converse of the previous statements, if something is true, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we have a couple of statements that satisfy this. First is just the definition of a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are uh, pardon, if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. One other test, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Next, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then we have a parallelogram. If the diagonals bisect each other, then we have a parallelogram. And lastly, if one pair of sides is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here are a couple of examples demonstrating that. Could you prove, using the previous tests, that this is a parallelogram? Well, yeah, for sure. We know that opposite sides are congruent because of those tick marks. And since both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, that implies that this is a parallelogram. How about this figure? We have one pair of opposite angles congruent. But that's not enough to prove that this is a parallelogram. It looks like one, and it might be one, but we can't prove that it is, because only one pair of opposite angles is congruent. We need both pairs of opposite angles to be congruent in order for this to be a parallelogram that we could prove is a parallelogram. How about this one? Remember the arrows indicate parallel lines, and since both lengths are six, we would say one pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent, so that implies that this is indeed a parallelogram. How about this figure? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We only have one pair of congruent parallel sides, or pardon, one pair of congruent opposite sides. We would need both pairs to be congruent. This one is a little bit deceiving. Uh, because the diagonals of this figure are cut into to two equal parts, we know the diagonals bisect each other, and so therefore this is indeed a parallelogram. How about this figure? We see AC is 10 and BD is 10. AC is a diagonal, BD is a diagonal. They're both equal in length, but that does not imply that this is a parallelogram. We know that they're congruent, but we're not for sure that the diagonals bisect each other. And so we can't prove that this is a parallelogram. What 
What about this figure? We have one pair of opposite angles congruent, and the other angle, 117 degrees. Well, we're not sure what that third, or pardon, that fourth angle is. However, in section 6.1, we found that the sum of the angles in an uh, some of the interior angles of a quadrilateral must be 360. And so if we subtract 360, minus 117, minus 63, minus 63, we get 117 degrees. And so therefore, we can prove that this is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Here's a different example. Can you prove to me that ABCD is a parallelogram using the slope formula? While using the slope formula, we would have to show that opposite sides are parallel. And the way that we do that is show that the slopes are equal. So for example, the slope of segment AB is 3 over 2. The slope of segment CD is also 3 over 2. The slope of segment BC is negative 1 fourth. Likewise, the slope of AD is negative 1 fourth. So therefore, since both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, uh, because they have the same slopes, we can indeed prove that this is a parallelogram. So slope formula is one way to prove that uh, parallelograms using coordinates are, uh, are indeed parallelograms. You can also use the distance formula. If you use the distance formula, you want to show that the opposite sides are congruent. So for example, AB and CD are both equal to square root of 13. BC and AD are both equal to the square root of 17. And since both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, that means they're congruent, and so therefore ABCD is a parallelogram. We can also use the midpoint formula to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. We do that by showing that the diagonals bisect each other, and they bisect each other if their midpoints are the same. So first, we want to show that the midpoint of AC is equal to the midpoint of BD. And since the midpoints of the diagonals are the same, that means the diagonals bisect each other, and so therefore ABCD is a parallelogram. So three ways to prove that we've got a coordinates that make a parallelogram, slope formula, distance formula, and midpoint. Now let's take a look at a uh, flow proof example. Let's say we want to prove if one pair of sides is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, we know this theorem is true, but we want to prove that this theorem is true. So uh, we know we're kind of dealing with a parallelogram, and it says if one pair of sides is both parallel, so ni is parallel to ls, and also congruent, then we want to prove that this is indeed a parallelogram. Well, how do we do that? Remember the definition of parallelograms. The definition of a parallelogram is quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if it has parallel opposite sides. So we've already proven one pair of parallel sides, the red sides there. We need to somehow prove that NS is parallel to IL. The way we'll do that is with triangles. If we split up the triangles down a diagonal, then we can prove that the two triangles are congruent, in this case using side angle side. Then if we can prove that the two triangles are congruent, then using CPCTC, I know this angle must be congruent to that angle. So angle LSI is congruent to NIS. And if alternate interior angles are congruent, then I have parallel lines. So let's build this proof. We're dealing with an SAS proof. We're given that NI is congruent to LS. 
I have the two red angles marked in, NSI and LIS. Those are congruent because we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, so alternate interiors must be congruent. And then the shared side, of course, IS is congruent to SI. And now we can use CPCTC to show that these angles are congruent. And if those angles are congruent, they form alternate interiors to show that these sides are parallel. So CPCTC says that the angles are congruent, which means that the segments opposite them are parallel. And then that red parallel lines, uh, we were still given that NI is parallel to LS. And so now we have two pair of parallel sides, which means it is indeed a parallelogram. By the way, if you'd rather, instead of uh, writing that all out, if you just wrote definition of a parallelogram, that would be sufficient as well. Finally, let's take a look at some coordinate practice. I'll give you a quadrilateral, and you have to supply the missing coordinates. Use the same variable when it's appropriate, and only introduce a new variable when you need to. So let's say that this quadrilateral, F-O-R-K, is a rectangle. The only coordinate we're given is point R, negative C, E. Well, if we look at the negative C value, that indicates that this length is C units in the negative direction. And so likewise, O is C units in the negative X direction. The congruence markings on the bottom segment show that F is in the positive direction, C units over, and K is also, uh, also has C as an X coordinate. Now let's take a look at the E coordinate of, of point R. The fact that the Y coordinate of R is E, that shows me that the rectangle is E units tall. And so therefore, K is also E units tall. Let's try another. Here we have Leon. Leon is a parallelogram. And we have a few missing coordinates. If you want to, pause the video and test yourself. Fast forward to check your answers. Well, we know right off the bat that L is 0, 0. Then, because opposite sides are congruent, if LN is A units long, then I know EO is also A units long. Then, because E has an X coordinate of B units, I know this length is B units long, so therefore O has an X coordinate of A plus B units. You could have also written B plus A. Then if we look at the C on point E, I know that this length is C units tall, which indicates that O is also C units tall. Let's take a look at one more example of this. Here we have FARM, and it's a parallelogram. I guess O is, oh, that was a typo, I guess. So we still want to find the coordinates of O. <laughs> Give it a shot. Try it on your own if you'd like, or if you want to, you can follow along. First, if we look at the Y coordinate of point A, we know that this length is R units tall. So therefore, O is also R units tall. Next, if you look at the x-coordinate of point M, we see that that length is M units long, which means the top length is also M units long. However, that green segment straddles the, uh, straddles the y-axis. And so instead, we'll take a look at the negative N-coordinate. 
we know that this length is negative n, and so the leftover distance would be m minus n. And last, this coordinate proof example. So this coordinate proof starts with the if part of the statement, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we have a parallelogram, and we want to set it on a set of x, y axes. So I know the bottom will fit along the x, and let's try and put one of the corners in the origin of the x, y grid. So I've named mine A, B, C, D. You could choose any other name if, you, if you'd like. Uh, now in terms of coordinates, I know A is at 0, 0. And then I'll pick just a couple other coordinates so that this makes sense, uh, so that it will always be a parallelogram. So I have B is at A0, D is at BC, and C is at A plus B, C. So we're given that ABCD is a parallelogram. We're given that because it's the if part of the statement. And we want to prove that AC and BD bisect each other. In terms of coordinates, that means we want to prove that those two diagonals have the same midpoints. So all we have to do with a coordinate proof is just calculate the midpoints of the diagonals. So the midpoint of AC, 0 plus A plus B, that's the sum of the x's, over 2, and then 0 plus, it should say C, over 2. So that simplifies to a plus b over 2, c over 2. For the green side, the midpoint of bd will follow the same thing. Add up the x's divided by 2, add up the y's divided by 2, which simplifies to the exact same midpoint. And therefore, we conclude, since the midpoints of ac and bd are the same, I know for sure that ac and bd bisect each other.